Governor Newsom, his uh, ex-wife, Jennifer Newsom, Jennifer Siebold Newsom, I think that is her name, yes. She called me and she set up a meeting with me to meet her somewhere in Brentwood. And I actually went and I got very like creeped out and I saw her sitting where I was supposed to meet her and I looked at her and I, I turned around and went back into my car and drove away. She wanted to meet me. She reached out to me. <laughs> Before we completely lose the uh, the political part, the, oh, yeah. the Newsom the it Newsom all goes part. Together. So Newsom. Yeah, no, it all sort of fits. But I know you, you've got something you wanted to talk about about Newsom specifically. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dave. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, I feel like Hal two thousand. Yes, Dave. <laughs> no, Dave. Sorry, Dave. No, Dave. Sorry, Dave. That's strange. So yes, Governor Newsom. His. Uh, ex-wife, Jennifer Newsom, Jennifer Siebold Newsom, I think that is her name, yes. She called me and she set up a meeting with me to meet her somewhere in Brentwood. And I actually went and I got very like creeped out and I saw her sitting where I was supposed to meet her and I looked at her and I, I turned around and went back into my car and drove away. She wanted to meet me. She Wait, reached when out is this? When is this, just to this be clear? This is about uh, six months before the New York Times article on Weinstein that I set up broke. Okay. And she called me on behalf of a Theranos board member, the uh, lawyer for, um, longtime lawyer of Hillary and Bill and um, Clinton and Weinstein, one David Boyce. So this woman, I don't know, some blonde lady named with the last name of Newsom, cold calls me and is like, David Boyce wants to know what it would take to make you happy. Six months before the Weinstein story. What it would take to make you happy, which you took as for those that might be playing along a little bit slowly? I, I don't know. I don't know if it would be fiscal remuneration. I don't know. I, I like absolutely nothing would make me happy. You falling off the planet, David Boyce, and your whole company. If you all fall off the planet, I would be happy. Since you cannot do that, I will remain unhappy with you and you shall deal with my displeasure. But they're scary. These are operators. They're tied into SDK Knickerbocker. They're tied into Hillary. They're tied into Nancy Pelosi. This is all backdoor bullshit for their gain. And we're tired of it. We're suffering. People are dying. Not just because stupid ass COVID, but because their fucking system is fucking killing us. And I've had it. And I think a lot of us had. So now it's time to go from feeling, I feel this is all bullshit to fact. It is all bullshit. And vote Larry Elder. Because why? Why the fuck not? What have you got to lose? How's it going, people? How's your systemite society working for you? Try something different. Might as well. There's my pitch. <laughs> <laughs> like a pro. I think like a like pro. the best campaign. Like, you know, I just like for me, like I used to volunteer years ago at a place called Covenant House and I never did it with cameras. And I would go and I would speak to homeless runaway uh, trans kids, which, you know, um, because I was taken in by them when I was a homeless 13 year old. That's who raised me. They, they were like my mother's. Right. And so I always felt like I would repay the favor. And I knew that state run therapy could not help them in the way that I could, because I don't use language the same way most people do. And I'm not scared. So when a kid, when the, the therapist would say this goes together with this, how did that make you feel? Uh, and they're like, mm, they're like, fuck, they, the hard shell comes up. That doesn't make me feel anything. And, and I, because I'm not bound by state laws or regular normal ways of conversing, which is why I'm effective, I believe, is is, is, is simply because I said, really, that would hurt me so badly. I would feel so betrayed and abandoned if the person I came here with abandoned me on the first day and left me to rot on the streets. I, I, that would like shake my faith in humans and everything else. And I feel like that is what the state of California needs to say to Gavin Newsom on election day. You have betrayed us, you have hurt us, you and your whole type because you are one in a long line of lizards and we don't want you anymore. I like lizards. I like real lizards, but I don't like the fake lizards. So clean house. You can do it. Go to the polls. Do it for me because I'm not going to. You got this. Just to be totally clear here, mm -hmm. Gavin Newsom's wife or ex -wife. wanted to sit or wanted to sit down with you, which mm -hmm. then turned out to be on the phone where she said, what can Harvey Weinstein's lawyer do to make this story go away? Gavin, what's the connection to Gavin Newsom's wife? Why was, why was it that she was the one that was because, calling you? 
mystified me too because they tried every way they could. They tried every single way they could to get to me. I mean, my literary agency, Dupre Miller, who I hired to represent me to shepherd and protect my book from Weinstein, uh, Jan Miller, um, uh, it's a big literary firm, and they um, were secretly exposed. They were exposed for secretly working with Weinstein the entire time they're supposed to be protecting my book. Uh, they were exposed to the New York Times for that. And when I met her, this Jan Miller woman, she was bragging about like giving a fifteen thousand dollar plate dinner for David Boyce and Bill and Hillary that night in Dallas. So you know, do the math. It's all connected. It is all connected. One at a time. I am coming. Yeah, I mean that seems like a fairly big scandal with an election coming in four days, basically. I guess in my world, it's like Tuesday at 2 p.m. It's just like another. I'm like, oh, like literally, do you oh, remember? Oh, the governor's wife calling me to, you know, basically shut me up with money about the yeah. biggest sex scandal of all time. Yeah. Ah. It's a serial rapist, and I, I loathe the media. They're always like, disgraced producer. I'm like, if he was an indigent black rapist, would you say yeah. disgraced, disgraced homeless rapist? No, he is a convicted Serial rapist. Let's just say it. We can all be adults. It wasn't pleasant. It wasn't fun. They really built a beast in me. And all I ever wanted to do in my whole life, Dave, was lay under a tree at night in the grass and look for owls. I know. You know? I know. I know that's true with you. You yeah. love the owls. And we've got this very bizarre owl connection. We both have owls hanging outside no, our houses. That in part two. But so I said the things, if there are people out there that can go in on this and, and work it out and expose more. Yes, they're all part of it. And this whole like Oprah saying like or Meryl Streep or uh, Gavin Newsom, oh, we were in our ivory tower. We just didn't know anything about it. We're too fancy for that. That's just those, you know, the little actresses. They wore short skirts. They deserved it. No, this was a machine. This is a machine. It has many, many tentacles. One tentacle is the human trafficking arm of it, right? He had a daily appointment for rape, 1 p.m., around 1 p.m. every day. Daily appointment for many years, anywhere there's a film festival. And it takes his protection. I introduced Hillary at Aussie Fest about three something years ago in Central Park. So it's like, it was like a rock concert for speakers. So they got me up there. And at this point I had just really found out how deep involved in the, in this whole thing, like that camp was, right? Um, and that it hadn't really been publicly outed yet by me or anybody. And so they said, okay, so you're gonna introduce Hillary. And I'm like, great, I got this. So the last thing I said to this, like, it was like a rock concert, right? I'm up there. And I said, and the last thing I will say to you all today, Harvey Weinstein was protected by the Democratic Party. Welcome to the stage, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> and this collective <gasps> Northern liberal gasp. Like, and suddenly I was literally like yanked off stage. They wouldn't let me go backstage <laughs> to get my purse. I'm walking out of Central Park. I see her like town car go by. I see the hair like, you know, in profile. And I just see her face like in profile go. And I was like, Nailed it. Wow. I but I can. I serve. I serve. Why? Because I was born to. Is there video of that? I mean, that, that, oh, oh my sure God, it's got to be somewhere. Uh, maybe. Let's say uh, I looked for it on their site, but of course now, you know, they take down everything. But it, like somebody out there has that video. I was certainly, I certainly did it. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.